Hey, it's Birdman for Birdman Media Patriot Edition. Here we are with the Antares Media Network. And uh, today, another interview with an Antares Alliance member. This time, a little different. It's not an actual product, even though it is a product. Uh, I've got with me Joshua Sloan. How are you, Joshua? I'm great. Thanks for having me. And your company is Tactical Web Solutions. Is that right? Uh, tactical Web Development. Development. Okay. So yeah. you, development different than solutions. I like that. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's at a different uh, stage with their website. Some have, don't have one. Some have one that just need a better. Some need to migrate from one platform to another. So kind of um, you know, full service. Very cool. So I always start with uh, backgrounds, um, sort of like uh, who you are, where you started. So uh, let's talk a little bit about you growing up, almost like high school kind of thing. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, what did your family do? Those kind of things. And sort of take me through to uh, where you're living now. Sure. Well, I like to tell people I'm kind of a second-generation geek. Um, my father was a programmer from the 70s, but we uh, we always lived outside of town, so kind of rural was his preference, um, away, a little bit away from uh, the metro areas, but grew up in central Illinois, um, Springfield, area, uh, Springfield, Illinois area. Uh, spent 10 years uh, in uh, Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, uh, my college, college town. town. And uh, went, went from there to Arizona for a couple of years and then ended up here in Pennsylvania for the last um, uh, 12, 12, 13 years. Oh, I didn't know about Arizona. Where in Arizona did you live? I uh, I was kind of in, well, from my perspective, there's a little bit of suburban hell. I lived in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, worked in Tempe, Arizona. And, you know, it's one of those neighborhoods where everybody drives, you know, similar kind of cars and has two and a half kids and, you know, Jose does the yard work. And it was just, it was not, it was very alien for me, but uh, it was an experiment and, uh, you know, it, it was okay. I, I don't think I would move back there. I don't, I don't, wouldn't mind visiting, but I don't think I want to live there again. Yeah, having lived about almost 20 years in the Valley myself, I, I understand you. <laughs> there's a weird thing there where you drive from outside of town and there's this, it's like an ancient volcano. So all of the smog sits in the bowl. Yes. And there's this <laughs> haze that you can see when you're far away from the city, but you don't you don't really notice it when you're in the middle of it. But yeah, the, the desert's a tough place for anybody other than cactuses and lizards. Yeah. So now you said small town PA, right? Yes, yeah. My town here is uh, only about 400 houses, uh, about 1,000 people. And, you know, the best thing about small town life is the same as the worst thing. Um, everybody knows you and knows what you're doing, and <laughs> that's sometimes really good and sometimes not so good. But, cool. Uh, so, I like it. So talk to me about background. You said Tempe, so you worked in Tempe, so I'm guessing that might have been in tech. Yeah, um, I was working for the University of Advancing Technology as a small private college a tech school. Uh, they were the first ones to have a certified um, network security degree. And um, I had a strange title while I was there. I was a traffic coordinator, but essentially I was doing the online marketing for them. Right. And they also uh, asked me to uh, teach some uh, web development courses, some web marketing and um, uh, e-commerce. Uh, so I wore a couple of different hats while I was at the university. Very cool. So talk to me about your background in uh, in web development because that's that's what you do now, and yeah. how you came to the point of uh, of doing this, uh, and maybe how some of your family influenced it. Uh, well, Dad was a programmer from the '70s, so um, yeah, I guess the technology kind of comes natural for me. Um, I was at the University of Illinois in 1992 when the first uh, internet browser called Mosaic was developed. Wow. Uh, when the kids found out they couldn't make any money, they quit their college degrees and went and formed Netscape. Um, before that, it was all bulletin board systems. So, you know, 1987, 1988, it was um, uh, the internet was kind of there, but it wasn't like we know it today. So um, I realized pretty early on. Um, the potential for commerce, and uh, so I had uh, actually had my first online business in in um, 1992. Wow! Uh, it was a uh, aquarium breeding business, uh, aquarium fish, sorry, fish breeding business. I was about to say, how do you breed the aquariums? I was yeah, right. <laughs> they just seem to replicate all by themselves. Right. Uh, but yeah, we uh, 
uh, we had a hobby that we took into a into a pretty good business, and uh, nobody was really doing that in 1992. I think we might have been the first um, mail order fish business on the internet, possibly. Uh, at least for domestically raised aquarium fish. So, hmm. but um, my real heart was not in the design at that time, but more in the marketing, the storytelling. Uh, uh, and people would often think that, you know, with a good story, people will assume that you're way bigger than you are. Um, and so that's when I was, I was kind of hooked. I was like, wow, um, they'll overlook my little flaws in the web design as long as I tell a really good story and I have a great product. Um, and uh, so I, I went uh, to uh, take some technology courses at uh, a local community college while I was in uh, four-year college and uh, realized that there really wasn't anybody at that time in the early 90s that was providing a whole lot of um, consulting for people that were confused about how to get onto the Internet and how to, how to develop their businesses. For me, um, it, websites are really a... a a way to get uh, sort of creative and personal and financial freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe you have to be necessarily a million dollar company to value or have uh, value in a website. Um, but I, I do kind of think that there a good website has to do real, really three things. It's got to make you look good. You don't want to make it, you know, you don't want it to look like your cousin or your brother did it. Um, it's got to make your life a little easier. In other words, um, answer questions be so that you don't have to spend time on the phone or time on email when there's a self-help aspect to the website. Um, so lessen your you know, your workload a little bit. And then obviously it needs to pay for itself over time. It needs to bring you revenue that you wouldn't otherwise have if you didn't have your website. And so that's really exciting for me to, uh, to be a part of it. My heart is with small business, although I worked for um, one of the largest uh, domain companies in the world for uh, several years and um, while I was in the corporate world uh, I was also still doing consulting and, and freelance work. So not for Mr. Parsons. It worked out quite nice. Not, not for Mr. Parsons did you? No, no, one of, one of, his, uh, one of his competitors. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well you were down in the valley so it could have happened. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I have a horrible story for about that but I, i'm not sure it's appropriate <laughs> no 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 okay <laughs> um so you know yeah so you get into the the back end of it basically and i like that from the storytelling side of it so how did the design part of it then come along for you well uh, a friend of mine uh nathan love from uh, frontier tactical and also uh, one of the the creators of the anteris alliance um um contacted me end of last year, beginning of this year, and said, look, he said, uh, I'm tired of seeing really bad websites in our industry, in the uh, firearms and um, uh, outdoors and sporting goods um, industry, and this sucks really bad. We need, uh, we need help. We need to help these companies uh, modernize their websites and uh, improve their, their uh, usability and, and conversion rates and really help um, you know, modernize uh, some of their websites. So, so we've started doing that. It's um, it's a new initiative, but it was spurred on by Nathan's frustration that um, he had just run into so many really bad websites. Right. Okay. So, talk about uh, what it is that you do, sort of day to day, and and what your offerings to uh, to people, uh, both in the alliance and then outside as well. Sure. Um, well, one thing is, I'm not a hard sales uh, guy like I, I, mean, I don't pressure people um, I, I really like things to evolve naturally and organically um, I give everybody uh, an hour-long free consultation and they may only have one problem and that one hour consultation is solves that problem done end of deal no cost no harm no foul um, but I, I do that because I want to ha I want to make sure there's some good chemistry there and that I understand um, what their problems are with their website or with their future website, what what they expect out of it. And uh, I'm getting too old now to, 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 to do a lot of work with folks that I don't enjoy, but every single person that's come to me through the Alliance, I've, I've really had a good time with and enjoyed. And and uh, some of them have come back to do web development work. Some of them just needed that, that little bump, that little boost, that little 
hint or nudge in the right direction, and 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 then they're off and going on their own. So, um, we uh, we do have a, a little bit of a waiting line right now. Uh, we've kind of stacked up with uh, half a dozen sites we're working on at the moment. But um, anybody who wants to get a hold of me can certainly uh, just go to uh, tacticalwebdevelopment.com and um, you'll just see a, 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 a temporary page with, a phone, with my phone number on it. And uh, we'll find out, uh, we'll get you in the schedule for a consultation, and that's how it all starts. So who would be some of the ones that we could look at to see that, that maybe you've done their website? Is, are there some of those examples out there, or is it mostly just back-end stuff that you've done? Um, a little bit of both. Um, certainly Frontier Tactical was a site that, uh, that I worked on. Um, TacticalSquirrel.com, another website that, um, that I worked on. And uh, Wingspan Outfitters, we just, uh, we just got them off the ground. So those are a few that are, that are um, sort of prime time. And there's a, a couple more that we've done some, some back-end uh, consultation with. Um, and we've got uh, a couple more that I'm I, not sure I really want to uh, mention their names just yet, but we, we have a, a few more coming online. Yeah, as long as you didn't do the Affordable Care Act um, original launch, uh, oh, I'm good. So. <laughs> no, but I would I would have taken the twenty five million dollars or whatever they spent right? on that. Right? Yeah, who wouldn't? Yeah, I I, I, I I didn't know there was a bid opener I had to put in for it. So. Oh, I know exactly. <laughs> Everybody was like, "Man, you could have done better than that." I'm, I'm sure. sure I'm sure it could have crashed yeah. just as well and collected a check. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So where do you see things going? Here's the question. You know, uh, there's so many websites. There's so much online yeah. presence. There's so many social. Yeah. I mean, just this morning, somebody pointed out a new um, line, L-I-N-E, which is a new social media network for texting and this and that. What, what do you sure. see? What do you think's next? Well, here's the thing. I feel like you, you have to have the basics down before the advanced stuff is going to work for you. I mean, there are people that jump on the latest, greatest thing every time it comes out. They want to be the latest, the greatest. Right. But, you know, if uh, if you can't get the traffic that you have to your website to convert now, then we need to address that before we, you know, assume that some new traffic source is, is going to be the solution to your problem. <laughs> uh, I do I do believe in testing and experimenting, and I and I. But on the, when you're on the bleeding edge, it's. Um, uh, there's no there's no guarantee in payoff. Uh, so I think that um, uh, it's always been true that uh, your visitors or your potential clients they need to have trust in you. And so on, in some markets, for example, in small business, uh, Twitter isn't really do anything for them. But now Facebook can do quite a bit for them. Right. Um, and so well, why don't we have Twitter and why don't we have Instagram and why don't we have this and that? Well, are you managing what you have already? Because if you're not, we need to reassess some priorities. Uh, it's kind of a Rob Peter to pay Paul situation with small business. Um, you can spend a lot of time and a lot of money going in directions that uh, won't necessarily benefit you. So I try to keep it very grassroots, very down to earth. Um, to make it so that it's not scary for people right. and that they understand that there's a lot that can be done, but, um, you know, marketing is kind of like love. It's all about the timing, you know? Uh, <laughs> so along that line, well, along that line, what's the ba best bang <laughs> for the buck? What's the best bang for the buck? What's the best thing to do or the best, uh, opening line or pickup line, so to speak? Well, you know, in, in our, in our industry, I hope it didn't shift too bad there. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, it's, it's looks like you're in an earthquake, but it's fine. <laughs> hey, just so everybody knows, um, Joshua's, uh, he's got to handhold his phone to do this kind of, we, we rigged a little bit for him, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so what works? Well, um, best bang for buck opening line kind of thing. I mean, where do you start? Well, I would say that, uh, Let's assume that everything's good with your website. You've got everything that I would score you uh, an A or a B on, in my in my college course. Uh, then it becomes an issue of um, figuring out what you've done before that's worked, and let's try to make it work better. What have we not done before that might work? I find that a lot of small businesses do have a lot more interaction and spend a lot more time getting uh, exposure on Facebook and Instagram, especially in our industry. 
a lot, a lot of Instagram folks um, out there, and it's great. It's fun to share those pictures, but if you lose focus of I need to make sales, it's not worth it. So you know, it could. I'm not going to besmirch you for having fun, but ultimately this kind of stuff has to pay for itself. Right. And um, you know, the number of websites still today that don't use tracking analytics to figure out where their traffic came from or where their sales or leads came from is just mind-boggling. Um, I'll give you a quick example, uh, and and this there's others who've talked about this, but I think I was it was 2001 when I first kind of realized this. The single most underutilized page on any website. What do you think it is? Uh, about? No, it's actually the thank you page. Oh, wow. Because by the time you get the to page the page I don't have, page, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, by the time you get to the thank you page, you've either submitted a lead form or you've purchased something. One of the two. Right. So you're an action mode. And that's a valuable place to have somebody. They just trusted you to, to reach out to you. And so the thank you page, if it's good, it'll say thank you. If it's really good, it'll say thank you. Your order will be shipped or we'll contact you in the next 24 hours. Basically tell them what comes next. Right. If it's really, really good, it'll give them something else to do. By the way, follow us on Facebook, you know, Instagram. And if you're not already on our newsletter, um, our mailing list, uh, sign up on the mailing list. Right. Now, if you can, um, I often will recommend putting something on the thank you page that has value that they weren't expecting. So it could be a free PDF, a free guide, uh, could be a coupon code, could be anything really, but something that's surprising, something that's unexpected, something that has some value, you get to you get to determine what that value is. But I've had people who have revamped and revitalized their, their approach to using the thank you page mm -hmm. that have made millions of dollars just from that one technique, just from that one uh, strategy. It's Nobody thinks about it. Nobody cares about it. They just they want to say thank you, but then they don't realize the opportunity that they're missing. Right. Very good. So that makes you tactical. Good. Now we, we've actually made sense out of tactical web. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because everybody throws names at things, but if you actually don't have something that fits it, sometimes the name doesn't fit. But uh, as I found yeah. with most of the Antares companies, uh, they make sense. Um, yeah. Talk to me about the Antares Alliance, how it came up. I'm, I'm going to bet Nathan Love has something to do with it. Just guessing. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, so talk to me about how the conversation came along and then and why you became a part of the Antares Alliance. Well, I had already done some work for Nate on his website, and I believe, I think it was right after SHOT Show uh, uh, of this year that, uh, no, not not this year, last year. Last year. Um, he came back and, you know, he was kind of uh, overwhelmed by the amount of contacts that he had made while he was there. Um, but he realized that um, uh, there was a potential for uh, hel helping this niche or helping this vertical out uh, in a way that, you know, when one company succeeds in the alliance, it ha there's a greater potential for all companies to succeed. Right. Because they are, one of their goals is to not just sell each other's products, but to share resources. And that could be products, but it could also be knowledge and experience. So one person may be great at Instagram, another another person's great at Facebook. Somebody else is great at email marketing. Somebody like yourself is awesome at uh, uh, video and, and audio production. Um, and so by having those connections uh, sort of uh, formalized within the network, uh, the idea is is that everybody everybody gains, everybody benefits. Right. And I love that. I love win win win. I, I kind of don't like the idea of competition. I'm more of a co-opetition kind of guy. Like right. You could both, sell, you know, two companies could sell the same product, but yeah. You know, the the fact is, there's no reason for antagonism, and and even if you're competing for a market, in most cases, I've seen the market's big enough to hold two or more or an unlimited number of uh, of people selling the same product. It's about you know differentiating yourself 
rather than you know actually competing. Eh, if there's not a big enough market, just redefine the market. There you go. If 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 in terms of uh, the search engine world, we say if, if you're not in the um, keyword neighborhood that you want to be in, you know, make the keyword neighborhood. <laughs> there you go. So you know. Awesome. So, okay, Joshua, let's, uh, let's dial one thing down here because uh, we had we sure. sort of skipped it over. Um, I'm a patriot, you're a patriot. Neither one of us has served military or uh, as a first responder. So where does your yeah. patriotism come from and, and where did you really uh, uh, find things in your life that way? I think I was a malcontent from birth. Um, I really saw a, a kind of a troubled world and... Um, I always felt that being a patriot is, you know, sometimes it means you know, putting your life on the line. Sometimes it means going the extra mile. But sometimes it's just about caring enough to want to make things better and not giving up hope that we can actually be better as, as a country. Right. And uh, so that that's kind of, I guess, the... An optimistic malcontent, um, <laughs> if, that's, if that makes any sense, um, that uh, we kind of rise or, or fall together, um, and and so my, my version of patriotism is simply to help everybody be the best that they can be, and 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 maintain that sense of hope and optimism. Yeah, I think you mean revolutionist, but just guessing. Possibly, possibly. <laughs> I, I tell my wife sometimes that uh, gardening for me is a revolutionary act because every piece of food that I put in my face that I didn't have to spend a dollar on tastes like freedom. There you go. So. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, anything else, Joshua, that you want to tell people out there that they'd like to know about you? We know where to find you. We're going to put those links up on the on the uh, the podcast and also on the videos as well. But uh, yeah, what el what else would people like to know about you that you want to get out there? Well, the only stupid questions are the ones you don't ask. So when you, I oftentimes will tell people when they call me up for just even a free consultation, take notes. Right. Uh, record the call if you want. Uh, I don't care. I have 10 people there in the same room at the same time if you need to. Um, I'm going to give you the best that I have to offer, and if I don't have a particular experience or strength in an area, I'm going to tell you. I'm, there's no value to me blowing smoke at anybody at this point. So uh, don't be afraid to ask what you think might be a silly question because I've probably heard it a hundred times before. Um, and uh, don't feel that you can't get better because sometimes when I take calls or consultations, I'm affirming what you're doing and saying, yes, that's great. Yes, keep doing that. And sometimes I challenge it. Right. And I really don't think that's a good idea for you. <laughs> and I'm not sugarcoating anything when I talk to my clients because it's more than just a, a job for me. It's, it's kind of a lifestyle. And um, so I want you to know that I'm, I'm a, shoot, a straight shooter when it comes to my consulting. Very cool. So once again, it's Joshua Sloan with Tactical Web Development. I get that right? right? Good. Awesome. Uh, I'm Birdman. This is Antares Media Network, and we'll see you again soon. YouTube and then also on Facebook as well. The links are down below. It's easy to follow. You know it's easy to subscribe on YouTube. So check it out. Got any questions, please shoot them in the comments below. I always get back to everyone eventually. I'm Birdman. Have a good day.